Okay. I'm sure many of you already have seen me here playing music and trying to be just in the presence of God. And again, my name is Jessica, as everybody knows. And back home, they call me Millie. I'm sure for Milagros, right? Oh, what's up, New York? God bless y'all. <laughs> okay. We're all a community, so I ask that everybody extends their hands and we pray over our sister Jessica. Heavenly Father, um, we pray that your presence is here, that your presence is strong in the life of Jessica. You have done so much in her life. Allow her to be free, transparent, and vulnerable to your Holy Spirit because her testimony is a testimony of truth in her life, but also a testimony of where you can pick anybody up, Lord, you can transform, and that show us, each and every one of us, that anything is possible with you, Lord, by our side, and she is a living testimony of your power, of your graces, of your mercy, of your love, of everything that you have to offer her and every one of us in this night tonight. We ask for a special blessing and that you continue to bless her and her path and her journey and everything she has to offer this ministry and her marriage and her husband and her whole family, Lord. We put them in your hands, Lord. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm sure many of you already have seen me here playing music and trying to be just in the presence of God. And again, my name is Jessica, as everybody knows. And back home, they call me Millie. I'm sure for Milagros, right? Oh, what's up, New York? God bless y'all. <laughs> okay. Woo. No pressure. It's easy for me to sing in front of people because I'm just praising God. But when it comes to talking about myself, it's a debt. And the wise guy says, destiny is in your hands. So I want you to take that in because I had to, I had to take it in at one point. And I had to understand that I give, I'm the one that's in charge of feeling that joy. I'm the one that's in charge of singing in front of people. I'm the one that's making the decision, not mom and dad. This is part of what? My destiny. And so as I look at my testimony and I say, okay, all of these things transpired throughout my life, I'm like, okay, God let me live. I'm here now. I sing pretty good. I don't really understand Spanish, but I'm doing it anyways. Something is in that. So every one of you here sitting is on purpose, not because you decided, but because it's part of your destiny, right? To the church, you become, you know, like a little snobbish. I'm going to just say, I'm, and I'm going to stand in it. I'll, send, I'll stand in it like, oh, you're not doing things right. Mira esa, como esta vestida. Look at how she dressed, Right? These things happen. Oh, she sings terrible. <gasps> and we go through the process of judging people and criticizing people in church. So as I was learning about Christ, I too became like this. Oh, she don't know how to sing. She volunteering, but she don't even sing. I don't understand why. Why is she even here? Like, she not praising the Lord. She don't know who God is for real. Like all of this judgment. And I know y'all laughing because you know what I'm talking about. So I, I very snobbishly would take that spirit of like negativity to, to my house. And my older brother and my younger sister, they weren't going to church like me. So I'm like, ustedes están pecando, pero brutal. Like you guys are sinning on blast. And maybe she did not know what she was forgiving at the time, but Christ was there in the midst of us, and I knew it. But it doesn't stop there. 
See, when starts, Jesus starts to change you from what you were to what you are, and it takes time. It's a journey, right? I was on this journey. And some, some people will say when they ask me to say my testimony, I was like, testimony? What you mean? I'm not trying to be like you, big brother, and I'm not trying to be like you, little sister. And I would basically take the judgment and criticism to my home, to my brother and sister. And I would look down on them. I'll be like, mira esta. She's going to destroy her life. I wasn't going to home to say, hey, Desi, you know, Jesus loves you, man. And I love you, too. I wasn't saying that. I I wasn't any of the things that people actually have testimonies about. I did not escape life-threatening things. And I did not come to life like Lazarus. Like, these are not, I need a testimony like that, right? But thinking about my testimony this time around, it was very difficult because it's like, God, I know, is doing something with me, but maybe someone here sitting down needs to hear this. And maybe it sets them straight. And so the reason why I say it doesn't stop there is because after that, God put a mission in my heart. I kept complaining consistently through this testimony, right, that I didn't know Spanish, right? I didn't know church. I don't know what they're so happy about. So what did I do? I did two things. I asked my dad to buy me an English Bible because there was none existing in the house, no English Bibles. There was many Spanish Bibles. I asked him to buy me an English Bible. It continues. Because I needed to learn Spanish, I then understood how many people in the church that only spoke English needed to also be evangelized. And You know, I would talk to some people and they would be like, Millie, I'm not going to the English mass, the organ and stuff. I don't listen to that music. The, the Spanish mass is where it's at. They got, you know, pandeletas, they got guitars, they got maracas, they got guido. Like, that's fun. I don't know what they're saying, but I'd rather go to the Spanish mass. So I said, okay, what did I tell you this? Why don't I take a few songs in English, in Spanish, and translate them. Would you come to the English Mass? Are you going to play the same instruments? Because organ is whack. I'll play guitar. What do you think? So as I started doing this in the church, right? I started to translate some songs from Spanish to English. And people started, the young youth started to come to the English Mass. And they would come to me and they say, Millie, wow, how you translated that song? I know that song. I know it. I know. And I felt like, you know, I felt normal. I felt like I'm, I belong here. And God, you know, God speaks through you and, and shows you. He reveals to you slowly what your purpose on this earth is. Right. And he was revealing through those things that he inspired me to do in the church what my purpose was and it was exciting to soar it was after going to cdj and i was like i'm gonna go there because they're in la is fine the fir very first time i felt so very welcome that i was like i'm gonna go back to soar and i'm gonna sit i'm gonna just sit and i'm gonna just listen i'm not gonna say anything i'm gonna just be there i'm gonna just be there and i come in and i walk into a bible study all the way on the other side And there's all these Bibles. I was like, this is exactly what I want. Let me sit. I'm going to sit. And first thing, first person I see is um, Chris. I don't see him. I don't see Chris here, but I hope he's watching. First guy, then, hey, sis, how you doing? Gives me a hand, shake. I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. And he sat next to me. Like, he sat next to me. I was like, oh, okay. I, don't, I got like a friend now. Like, I, I didn't come here with anybody. Like, I got a friend, somebody sitting next to me. And we go and we're going to start praying the rosary. So he goes, he goes and he gets a rosary for me. And he brings the rosary. He's like, you need a rosary, sis? Here you go. I was like, oh, you guys got rosaries here? That's great. How you got a bag of rosaries? It's so hard to find rosaries sometimes. <laughs> so I sit there and I pray the rosary. And that night they had four visitors that came from a school of prophetic, profecia. 
and they were going to pray for us. And I, I got excited because I know what that is. I, and, and I kept looking at it around. These people don't even know what this is. They don't even know what's about to happen. And I got antsy and I'm all by myself. I'm like, yo, they're about to prophesy. And they're about to tell me something. I'm, and I'm going to open my heart to Jesus. And this is exactly what I wanted. I want this. I want this. So I go up and I'm like one of the first persons to ask for prayer. And the, the lady was like, I see a big cross in front of you huge and you're in front of the cross and it looks like God is waiting for you and of course all the things that go through my head like I know like I know like you have this conversation with God you have this this person, around, I know he's waiting. I don't really want to come. And I just want to sit. I just don't want to do nothing. I just want to sit and just listen. I just want I don't want to be, I don't want to do nothing. Because I, if I start to do something, I'm going to think about my dad. And I'm going to start crying. And I'm not going to be able to hold myself anymore. And so, um, I start thinking about, like, this is, like, in my head, like, I know, God, I know that you're waiting for me, but I don't know if I'm ready yet because dad is not here. He's not here. What am I supposed to do? And not that How am I supposed to, to sing the same songs or to say the same testimony or to, without his support, without him standing there saying, Millie, you got this. How, how am I supposed to do it without dad? So I keep coming to sower. I keep coming. And the second time I come and Deacon, he asked me in my ear, he's like, what, what are you praying for, sister, tonight? And I said, I'm praying to know what my purpose is without my dad. What is my purpose without my dad? Without him, I can't complete. I'm incomplete. So he's praying for me and all of a sudden I'm hearing, I'm hearing a voice saying, Millie! Ellos te necesitan. Loud. I thought it was Jesus. I don't know who it was. It sounded like my, my dad. I thought I was going crazy. And De Deacon comes over and he says, you know, sis, I, I really need to ask you. Because I was hearing things. I was hearing loud things. And I just, I just kept saying, she's here. She's here. And I said, that was my dad. It, it, he was telling me, and I knew it was my dad because he was calling me Millie. Nobody here knows me by Millie unless you know me personally, right? And so I hear this, and it's like my dad is telling me they need you. So then I tell Deacon my story of why I haven't come to the church to serve. And he says, you know, Sometimes people can heal others through their own pain, right? And so I, I like the title of my, my testimony is in that very moment here in Sower, L.A., here, I decided, well, let me offer myself. It's been six years since I come to the church, right? And... I came here and I went to Walter after, shortly, after, shortly after I spoke to Deacon. I said, hey, Walt, um, I play music. I, I play guitar. If you guys need anything, I'm more than happy to serve. And Walt knows. He's like, no, you didn't just say that. Right? And he goes and he speaks to sis back there. He says, sis, you remember our conversation last night? That we were wanting to get a female musician to play for what mother's day mother's day event and i looked at him he looked at me and i'm like no are you serious and then deacon's like the works of the like he is almost as if he knew it right he's like yes yeah, sis come through come next week and as soon as i come next week and the week after and the week after mira it's like i've been here for years but it's not because of me. It's not because of my dad. It's not because of this guitar here, right? It's because here in Sower, they embrace me like one of them. 
Like one of them. They never judged me. They never asked me about my life. Yo, like where you come from? Who are you? Nothing, nothing, have, nothing like that happened. They, they just allowed me to just sing without even knowing if I could actually sing. Because people sing like gallo sometimes. And they still trusted. And that trust was so overpowering for me that I, I could actually get up and sing without breaking down for the very first time and, and, and understanding that my identity is not separate from my dad. It's not separate from Christ. It is with all of it. All of it counts. My birth, my sister, the forgiveness, the retreats, the constant walking around, trying to learn Spanish, trying to learn the songs and convert them and try to bring the hoveness with me. Like, yo, we got to learn about the Eucharist. All of that. I brought it here to Sower. And the other day I did my consecration. And in the consecration it says, from the book of Jeremiah, and I think it's on your page, Walter. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. So I say this to you through my testimony that before each and every one of you were in your mother's womb, because I know you were born because you're here. He knew you. He knew you, not knows you. He knew you like you came from his past time. Like he knew you in a different environment. Because when he was in heaven, he said, Millie, I'm going to send you down so you can do all of these things that I have for you. And the same he did with me, he's doing it for each and every one of you. It's not about me. It's about how Christ decided to say, I'm going to let this person come into this world because I have something to say. Jesus got something to say, and sometimes we can't hear his voice. Why are these people running around, jumping around, and why they have that joy? Because they know that Jesus lives in them. They hear his voice. They feel his presence. You ever ask yourself, why I don't feel God? Ask yourself. Go ahead. You know why you can ask yourself that? Because God gives you the freedom to do so. He gives you the power to say, I don't know you, God. He gives you the power to walk in his grace, even if you're not living in his grace. He gives you the power to come up here and speak. He gives you the power to have a testimony, no matter how small or big it is. He gives you that power. He gives you the power to fall. He gives you the power to get up. And it's not fair. That we squander it sometimes. But you know what? Sower and the people that are here for you allow you to come back. Because Jesus allows you to come back. I would say sometimes that I don't really have a testimony, right? But my testimony is purpose my testimony is action just like I did what I did what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and what are you doing for God and why why are you here my brother Jesse take a moment we can just close our eyes and I'll invite sis to the front